Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube owner for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Over the last few months, I've not been able to go <laughs> go anywhere, really. So I've been building a lot of things and repairing a lot of things that I put off uh, in years gone by. One of the things that I built is an antenna switch to a, a place at the bottom of the tower uh, to switch between one of five antennas. And I'd like to show you that and how it works. It's a really pretty simple device, but it has a whole bunch of advantages. And we're going to test it with a nano VNA to see how much loss is created by my homebrew design. And we'll do that right after this break. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf Calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ Calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. At the time I'm recording this, it's December 2020 and the the virus is claiming um, huge numbers of, of deaths every day and yesterday was the worst so far worst um, loss of life um, even greater than 9-11 and other terrible things because of that a lot of us are a lot of us are staying home and doing things around the house uh, and so I've kept myself pretty busy building things which is uh, for me a lot of fun I had a coax switch at the bottom of the tower and uh, this is what it looked like. Forget what brand it is, this is, I'm not complaining about this particular manufacturer or how he made it. I had two of these, one of them has failed and what failed was the, uh, the relay contacts and uh, it may be that they're just not quite big enough for what I was attempting to do and I'm going to uh, switch to another camera and uh, bring that uh, over here to show you what the uh, what the relay contacts look like. They are um, rated at 8 to 10 amps depending on where you read and who you read and I'll uh, switch to that as soon as the other camera focuses. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about Ohm's law and what that entails. So here's, let's see if I can get a better picture. Here's one of the relays. Um, there, this is a six position switch. So those are six position, uh, six different sets of contacts, screw terminals. And there are, uh, the blue things are MOVs. So if there's a lightning strike in the area, it, um, if there's a high voltage on, the switching line it takes that to ground. Uh, I wish this thing would focus. The relay contacts, as I said, are um, rated at 8 to 10 amps. But here's the catch. And this is maybe where there's a mistake in the design of this device. Maybe. The relay contacts are 8 amps. Uh, let's say 10 amps. Uh, it could be easier to work with. Let's say 10 amps. So if we're going to figure power, we know from Ohm's law that power equals the current squared times, in this case, the impedance. So it's I squared R. We know from Ohm's law that power equals I squared R. So just simple math, if it's a 10 amp contact, 10 amp squared is 100 times 50 ohms, that's 5,000. So isn't this good for 5,000 watts? Well, maybe not. I've tried to source from the uh, the manufacturer of the relays what their rating is, and it appears that it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 amps at 60 hertz. So it's an 8 amp relay that's good for switching AC lines. And so then I went to another company that makes relays that are good for uh, HF, uh, VHF, and AC and looked at the rating at AC and the rating at HF. In this case, it was 30 megahertz. So they have a 60 cycle rating and a 30 megahertz megacycle rating. The contacts that were rated at eight amps, um, electrical current, 60 hertz, they rate at, generally speaking, half that much at HF at 30 megahertz. So does that mean that the relay contacts then can handle 2,500 watts? Because we said 5,000. 
No, it doesn't. Because again, it's I squared R. And I, just real simple, let's say the contacts are good for um, 4 amps at 30 megahertz. So 4 squared is 16 times 50 is 800 watts. That's a far cry from 3200 watts. What's the big difference? It's the current squared. 8 squared, if it were 8 amp contacts, would be um, 64 times 50 ohms would be 3200 watts. But if it's half that much, if the current is half that much, the power drops by uh, to one quarter because it's, again, the number squared. So what I did was I, I built actually two boxes. And um, the first one, I had it done. And I realized that some of the relays, uh, which were in, were in glass tubes, were broken during the move to the new location. So I had to start the whole thing over again. Um, the control box is the same, but the box that's outside, I trashed it and started over again. So here's what I ended up with. And um, let me show you the outside of this thing first. It's going to mount uh, with these brackets. And uh, at my tower, there's a horizontal pipe that's two inches in diameter. Uh, a saddle goes over this, and I don't have it here. So saddle, saddle, and the pipe in between, and the device will sit like this with the um, relay, uh, with the coax connectors facing down, and also um, the uh, indicator lights will be facing down. And the reason for that is I wanted to make it watertight. So here's sort of the box with a lid on the top. It's heavy, probably weighs 10, 12 pounds. So here's the box. And there are the relay contacts, or sorry, there are the coax connectors, and I jammed in the uh, pilot lamps after the fact, and, and it looks that way. It's sort of like an electrical panel in that there's a bus bar, so there's a common conductor. In this case, it's a piece of uh, braid. And then each of the relays contacts to that, makes contact with that braid. And it's a single pull, single throw. So it's just basically an on and off switch. These contacts are R rated at 10 amps at HF. And so uh, these relays uh, are good for 5kW. Um, the only reason why I use these is because this is what I had uh, on hand. I had these um, for years. I've used them. I've used these relays in amplifier projects and all all kinds of things. So here's what it looks like before I switch over to another camera. Um, those are the five relays and the bus bar is the braid that runs across. Each of the contacts then is bridged to the coax connector. And the reason why I did it this way is to keep the length of the conductor as short as I could. I wanted was trying to get as, as little interaction as I could between um, one coax connector and another. And the answer to that is, uh, well, the question is, did it work? And the answer is, I don't know. I'm going to try it. Um, we'll get out the nano VNA and measure the loss and see how, how good or bad that is. I did measure the loss on the commercially made box. It was about a half a dB at uh, 10 meters. So let me see if I get a close-up of one of these relays because they're kind of interesting and I'm waiting for the um, little camera to focus and it's not doing it. There we go. So there are the relay contacts and that little door comes up, makes contact with each of those two flat surfaces that are silver plated in a vacuum. This gizmo up on top is um, a, a bumper uh, and basically it's rubber and I've just hot glued it into place to protect the top of the tube. These really are vacuum tubes and so they vacuum out the oxygen and that allows them to handle a lot of current. Then uh, this little piece of braid over here is the conductor to the coax connector and again I wanted to make that as short as possible so there's little interaction between um, each of these contacts because they are close together each of the relays because they are close together so there's the bus bar that runs along uh, one side and then the uh, contacts 
go out to the coax connectors. Coax connectors are, um, let's see if I can show you those, they are Teflon silver plated and uh, they have a gold, um, a gold center conductor um, and, it, and they're good quality. The negative on the box is uh, I tried to put five relays into the box and that was probably too much. I probably should have stayed with four. And then after the fact, after I had it done, I added the, uh, the lights to the, to the bottom of this thing in a not very pretty or elegant way. And what I figured was, occasionally I've been outside trying to figure out which coax line is energized and not been able to tell. So let's hook this up to the Nano VNA. And to do that, I want to measure the loss. Is there substantial loss in this thing? And um, so I'm going to look at it at 10, at, uh, 10 meters, which is about as high a frequency as I'm going to go. And I want to measure it uh, in kind of a real life situation. So I'm going to get 100 feet of coax and hook that up and then read it with the Nano VNA. And I'll do that right after I get set up. So stand by. I'll be right back. Okay, so the loss that I'm looking at is half the return loss. That's on the return, so it goes out and comes back. That's the return loss. In this case, it's 0.2 dB at 28 megahertz, 0.2223 at 29 megahertz, and 0.245 at 30 megahertz. So half of that, uh, the losses uh, at 30 megahertz is about 0.15 dB. In other, in other words, nothing. Oh, I'm perfectly happy with the box and its gigantic relays. So there you have it. A homebrew switch, relay switch, antenna switch, remote control switch that has virtually no insertion loss at HF. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I, I plan to get the uh, switch installed at the bottom of the tower today. If you have not subscribed, please think about doing that. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you did a thumbs down and want to send a message to let me know why, I would appreciate getting that. 73 for now. I'm Jim, W6LG.